Hello there. Hi, I'm Sandra Pollock and uh, it's Monday and I meet with you here every Monday to share a tip for the week. So as we're getting started, I realise that uh, Facebook's telling me I'm live and they are building an audience. So I think I'll just sort of go slowly, wait for some more people to join me. But uh, how are things going with you? We are very, very close to the Christmas holiday celebration, New Year celebration. Hi, Ishmael. Thanks for joining me. Um, so one of the things I want to be uh, sharing with us and talking about, as I've been thinking about, um, is relationships. We know that um, come this particular holiday um, celebration is that we... We, we think about relationships much more. I'm not saying we don't think about relationships at all during the year, but something about, and I know for, for me and, and, and for sort of my friends and families around Christmas time is one of those times where you really focus in on your family and the relationships that you have with them. And for some people, this is a really stressful time for lots of different reasons. It could be stressful um, because of finances. It could be stressful um, because, you know, you're thinking about presents and all of those sorts of things. You're thinking about how you're going to fit everybody into the limited time of the holiday or the limited time you may have off work or away from your business. And all of those things add pressure. Add to that the relationships that we have to deal with, then the pressure and the stress that you feel could be even more. So I thought I would share um, today just some thoughts that have been on my mind around how do you deal with the stress of relationships if that is something that you that you're having to focus in on this this holiday time. And these tips I think can be useful any time of year. It's just that uh, now that we're closer to this Christmas and uh, New Year celebration, I know everybody doesn't celebrate Christmas, but certainly we have a lot of time off or some time off during this, this part of the year. So I thought I would share um, some of my thoughts with you. And I'm looking down because I, I try and put myself some notes so that uh, I sort of stay on track and um, not go off too much. One of the thoughts that I would like us um, to think about, and I've certainly been thinking about, is what would you like if there's a particular relationship or set of relationships that you're having to deal with this time of year what would what's your highest um, desire for that relationship or those relationships what would you like to achieve and sometimes we 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 just go along with a situation and not necessarily think about what would i really like instead of just letting things happen to me what is my choice here? What would I like to achieve? Is it a better relationship? I mean, I think most of us, especially when it comes to family, we would ideally like to have a better relationship. And so um, I know one of the most difficult relationships of I, I had, bless her, my mother's no longer with us, but one of the most difficult relationships I had was with my mother. And those people close to us, hi Anne, um, those people close to us can sometimes, they know which buttons to press you know, to uh, whether <laughs> whether we're going to have a really good conversation with them or not. And sometimes because they're family and they know us so well and we're so open to them, it's really, really easy for those closer to us to press those buttons and just trigger, you know, the avalanche of, oh, my God, this is not working. Why am I here? And I'd be happier being somewhere else. So I know that for me, my mum was the person that, that could just press those buttons, bless her, and, um, you know, trigger me off into a tantrum. Um, and and over the years, I had to learn to think about, OK, what is my highest desire for this relationship? Now, it doesn't mean that you are able to make the other person respond in any different a way than they would ordinarily. But it's about taking control of you. The only person in this world that you are able to take control of is the person you see in the mirror when you look into it. So I guess so today I want to talk about. Uh, us thinking about what we want to achieve and then um, thinking about how, how we would control ourselves or to work on ourselves to um, be in control of us 
knowing that we can't control the other person. So if it's someone that you spend a lot of time with, you know how they're going to respond. You know the things that they're likely to say um, and you know their behaviors. So really, you're in a really good position because you know that every single time they're going to behave this way, every single time they're going to say something along a certain type of conversation. So you can prepare for that. Okay, if you would normally behave in a certain way, you would just go off the deep end, then how can you behave differently? Now, what we have within us is something that we take for granted so much, and that is our imagination. And it's been proven scientifically that when we rehearse something in our um, in our imagination, our whole existence, our whole being, our emotions, our thinking, our patterns of behavior um, comes in line with that. Now, really, this is nothing new for you and for me because when we're rehearsing how things are going to go wrong and this person is going to, they always say this and they always behave this way. When we, what we're doing there, when we're thinking about that, we're rehearsing that behavior. And then we go on to rehearsing how we then will respond. Oh, gosh, they're, they're just going to make me angry. They're just going to make me say this. So what we're doing is rehearsing that. So if we use those tools, morning Nick, good to have you on board again. So if we use those tools that we already have to rehearse something different, um, then we can prepare and our whole emotional state, our mental, our mental state, um, our mindset can be prepared for a different response. And we have that power within us by rehearsing so if someone says um you know well you you know you're never good at anything and that's something that they always say and they know that it winds you up that's why they say it <laughs> so how would you respond differently you could you have a whole raft of um choices you could just decide not to respond away you, uh, respond at all you could walk away or you could say, well, that's your view, but it's not my view. There are all sorts of things that um, that you could do or say that is different, but makes you feel more in control of the situation. So this, you know, as we come up to the holiday season, this holiday season, when you think about those relationships that you're going to be engaging in, some are unavoidable. So how are you going to take control of yourself, how you respond and how you um, just not allow people to, to wind you up? And that's really what it's about. Now, Ismail's written something, so I'm just having a look. Oh, he's saying he's off. He'll catch up with me later. He's um, having to go off to a meeting. Thank you for saying that, Ismail. I appreciate that. So it's about mental rehearsal. When we rehearse mentally we do it all the time but most of the time we're rehearsing how things are going to go wrong we're rehearsing the negative um, outcome for our interactions so it's about taking control and rehearsing how you want things to go or how you want your response to be so just looking at my my notes so if you want really the highest possible relationship with this individual or with this group of people then Think about how it could go well. Well, maybe if you come in with a different mindset, they might respond differently. I say might, you have no control over that person. But if your mindset is different, if you've rehearsed in your mind that you're going to respond differently, you're going to respond more positively, you're going to take a deep breath, and which will allow you a couple of seconds to change your, your mindset or a couple of seconds to take back control when they have said or done something that winds you up, then you are in a stronger position. So when you rehearse it, you take a couple of minutes every now and again during the day when you think about that interaction that you're going to have and you rehearse in your mind, taking a deep breath or behaving differently, that prepares your mind because everything we do, we are building um, there, were, uh, there are chemical reactions that are happening in our mind and in our, our brain and creating pathways. So when we mentally rehearse, we're creating pathways of behavior. And what will, what will happen is that you will encounter that situation and then your brain will say, oh, we've been here before. The brain doesn't connect that it's an imagination that you've been having. It's just, oh, we've been here before and we've responded this way.
So that that's why when you are in a situation, you've been rehearsing the negative ways, the brain says, oh, we've been here before, and this was how I behaved. So I'm going to behave that way again. So taking control, using the tools that you already have, your imagination, your decision making, uh, and using those things to help you create a different outcome by first imagining it, by secondly committing to behaving differently, saying something different, um, and empowering yourself that way, you will change the outcomes of your behavior, the outcomes of the relationship. Because when we respond differently, people tend to respond differently themselves. And sometimes this happens quickly, and sometimes it may take you know, uh, the doing this again and again with that person and they will eventually change. So even, you know, with the relationship with my mother, that eventually changed when I decided to change. Okay, she didn't become a different person, but there were things about me that made things, made the relationship a lot easier in um, in the latter years when, you know, she's no longer here, as I've said before. But I'm really glad that I made those changes because we did have a different relationship um, and things improved somewhat. So, you know, so I'm, I'm reflecting on how we can, you know, improve our relationships and, ha and change ourselves and empower ourselves to have different outcomes. And when we look at what we would... Um, want the best outcomes, the highest outcomes, our values. What's your values in terms of your relationship? And what are your value connections for that particular relationship? What would you most want to achieve? What's your highest achievement? So what happens when we take the tools that we already have and we use them and we create and commit to outcomes uh, using our imagination, outcomes that we want to change and we commit to doing our part to making those change those changes well it reduces our stress because we're creating different pathways in our brain different chemical reactions um, for more um, so less stressful outcomes and if that's what we see in our imagination then we reduce the amount of stress that we are expecting and we reduce the amount of stress that we experience um, we change the, our own expectations. If our expectations will be that, oh, it's, it's always going to go wrong, it's always gone wrong before, and it's going to be the same, then that, is, that expectation is what you're going to gear yourself up for. And that's likely to be the outcome. But if you change your expectations and you say, I am going to be calmer, and you practice seeing yourself behaving in a more calm manner, saying different things, doing different things, then that is a new expectation and that's more likely to be the outcome for you. Um, what did I, yeah, do we change the mindsets? I've already said that. We develop different responses in ourselves and for ourselves and we empower ourselves. We create the outcomes that we want and not just let life happen or let those relationships go into, um, you know, whatever they've gone into in the past. So there you go. So the tip for this week is as you're thinking about your encounters, you're thinking particularly about the holiday season and about those interactions that have been difficult, you know, in times gone by or in years gone by. Think about what's your highest desire um, for this encounter this year. How are you going to behave differently? What are you going to say, do that's different to uh, what you've done before that will not add fuel to that fire and practice seeing that outcome practice that encounter no matter what the person says or what you expect them to say um, practice you saying behaving differently doing something differently and change your mindset about the possibilities of the outcome because we can all create different outcomes when we're prepared to behave differently and to commit to being different ourselves. So I'm wishing you, you know, a good week, good relationships, good outcomes. And as you prepare for the holidays um, and all of the celebrations and getting together with your family, you know, a different mindset that will create 
positive, um, more interactive, more blessed and um, happier relationships with those around you. Um, and, you know, enjoy, enjoy your time. I will be back before um, before Christmas, but I thought I would get into talking about relationships, particularly at this time, and sharing some tips and some tools to help you get more out of your relationships wherever they may be so remember that we are constantly rehearsing and when we rehearse in our imagination um, how things have gone wrong before that is what we're preparing to encounter uh, in the future but when we change that and rehearse better outcomes then those better outcomes are more likely to be what we achieve so have a great week I am wishing you um, success, happiness, and sending you love and light and looking forward to catching up with you later on in the week. So let me know how this has worked for you. Do share it on if it's been um, a blessing or useful to you and I will catch up with you later. So Sandra Pollock from Open Mind Coaching, wishing you a wonderful week. Thanks for joining me. I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.